No, this is not a trick question. Um, I have to say, right off the bat, it would not be a top golf facility, which uh, thanks to people who live in Garden City, I have read about and and just I just don't get it. They're talking about a, using 300,000 square feet, putting a 65,000 square foot top golf facility on the 100,000 square foot where the city bank is. Now, I live here, and it's not fun trying to get around to Shaw's, to the library. I have to think how I'm going to get to the library, because I know I can't come out and cross Sakanasa and go up the hill to go home. So in this area, I would hope that we could find something that would not only encourage businesses. Now, we have a lot of businesses. We have the Wilder Group down below, and all those new restaurants just opened up. And I hope they, I hope they make a go of it. It's always good to see new businesses. That is tax revenue. I am not anti-business, but I'm anti-density of businesses where people live. People who live behind Garden City face terrible pressures where they live. People where I live face terrible pressures with the traffic. So I think we need to look at this space as an opportunity of mixed usage, not a 65,000 square foot top golf uh, facility. I'm not against golf, but if anybody's seen a picture of these places, it looks like the worst Las Vegas casino you have ever seen in your life. It is huge. It is massive. Ten seconds. And it's ugly. So let's talk mixed use, living and shopping together. Thank you. Councilman Hopkins. Thank you. Well, let's get it straight. I love golf. <laughs> it's a very important to me as a social climate. But uh, what I have done is I've, I've met with uh, the Garden City Neighborhood Association. And what I've tried to do is get them to see what the new infrastructure is going to look like. I've had numerous meetings with Kelly Coates, who is the CEO and the president of Copianatos, and I told them point blank, nothing will be, will be voted on until we see a new infrastructure. Uh, now, recently, we saw uh, the rebuilding of the new bridge over Pontiac is going to take place. There are plans for a new road that's going to come off Route 37. Uh, right now, if you go by there, the traffic backs up from Pontiac Avenue to 37 to, two, to Route 95. Uh, according to the plans that we were shown, that will change and a new road will come into the back of uh, Chapel View. Uh, but uh, as I told the people that I met with in my neighborhood, which is Garden City, there are times we come out onto Pontiac Avenue and we're trapped. It has gotten better since Citizens has, has moved out. Probably about 1,500 cars have moved up to Johnston that are no longer there. Uh, I'm still anxious to see what the development's going to look like because that's not even the next phase. We still have phase two that we're looking at, which could be a potential big box up on the top the potential for a gas station, uh, the possibility of moving the fire station. And these are all plans that I'm not gonna decide. I don't think Capenado is gonna decide until we all sit down with our neighborhood association. And the neighbors will give us a pretty good idea of what we want and what we don't want. Councilman Sykos. Well, I think this, uh, this points out a real uh, problem on the City Council, and that is that whatever vision the Council may have, or we may have as, as individuals, or the, the neighbors may have, the Council, uh, at the Mayor's recommendation, gave away the power to influence, in a major way, the development on that site by giving Chapel View wide discretion on the Uke Carcinato, a wide discretion on the zoning. What should have happened is we should have said as a council, you come up with a plan and we'll look at the plan and we'll adjust zoning if we think it's a good plan. 
but instead we gave away our bargaining power up front. And the same was done with Garden City. So what we have to do on zoning is when someone wants to develop something, whether it's Top Golf or Costco or the gas station, which I incidentally uh, proposed an amendment, both banning a big box store and a gas station from the, the uh, zone change, which was voted down by the Republican majority. Uh, what we need to do is say, come in with your proposal and we'll consider zone changes after we know the details of the proposal. Not, hey, you look like nice guys, we'll give you this wide pro uh, zoning authority that you want and we'll hope for the best. Amy? I learned about the um, Top Golf Plan um, working with Kelly Coates from the Cranston Historic District Commission that I'm in. Um, I know it's based out of Colorado. It's, it's a beautiful place. But I believe this plan for the Citizens Bank Building should, be, should um, depend on the impacts on the traffic and the residents' needs and wants. Um, I think it's a plan that needs to be more discussed among the council members, maybe a commission, um, in order to finalize the plan. Thank you. For the record, the vote on the capping on property in question uh, happened in 2016 prior to the Republican control of the Cranston City Council. Um, just to let everybody know. So my view for that site would be a mixed-use development similar to what we see up top, up top at Chapel View that would be a mix of residential and, and shopping. Um, I do believe the area is conducive for development based on where it is. However, I've already pledged to the members of the Garden City Alliance and through them to the residents of Garden City that nothing will happen on that site until a traffic study is conducted by the Capignano Corporation and not a traffic study done in the middle of the night when no cars are there. I want a traffic study done at peak times that adjust for what the development will bring in. I think the issue at that area is traffic. Uh, and we have to look at how the traffic pattern is going to change for anything that comes to that site. Uh, I will say there are zoning laws in place. Uh, the zoning was changed from C3 to C5 on that site to match all the zoning for the area up top and down below. Uh, zoning laws are laws, so if a zone is changed based on a developer's need to augment what they want to build, they still have to come under zoning laws, they still have to go through the pre-planning process, they still have to go to zoning. There's a whole lot of steps that someone has to go through, so no one has a blank check in the city. And then that's just a fact. So there are laws that are in place that cover zoning, that cover planning, there are panels that people have to go before when they want to develop something. Uh, and that's the process of the city. And just to let everybody know, the top cost is not coming to Cranston. It wasn't a popular investment. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought that the Top Golf uh, proposal was uh, way too big, way too bright, and, and uh, lit up at night um, for that location. Um, it, it wasn't very popular when we went door to door in Garden City. Um, and uh, just a comment on, on Mike's um, suggestion to have Carpionato do the traffic studies. I, that doesn't sound like a great idea if they're the developer. So I just thought maybe we should do our own traffic studies and come up with our own conclusions. Um, and uh, at mixed use uh, zoning sounds like it might be a good idea. And um, But nothing is uh, is wise without, without having the community weigh in and notifying the community of developments that impact them. So thank you. A rebuttal? Yes, please. Uh, one thank minute. You. Thank you. Um, the, Sarah, the meeting that we had included the Neighborhood Association, the President, the Kelly Coates, myself, Councilman Favicchio, as well as the directors and architects from DEM in the Department of Transportation. They were all at the meeting trying to explain us to us with a, a visual picture of what the plans were. This is not just a copy and auto development. This is a city, state, and private entity that is all coming together to try to come up with the right plan. I, I understand, however, um, 
we should rely on our own traffic studies and our own figures um, rather than a developer's figures because they're the one who wants to, have, you know, get a certain answer to to have their zoning go through. Michael, one minute. Just to clear that up, typically when traffic studies are done, they are done by third-party independent traffic companies that do a traffic study and are paid for by the developer. Uh, in this regard, we actually have it on the record that Capiano Corporation will pay the traffic study company of the city's choosing to ensure that there is no impartiality. So we've, uh, thank you, Councilwoman, former Councilwoman Lee, for that advice. Uh, we actually did it in the council chamber to make sure there is no nefarious stuff done. Uh, and typically now that the area is zoned C5, all traffic studies have to be done for any development on the site. Councilman Stikos, one minute. Yeah, I'd just like to say that the key decision is the zone. It's not the traffic study. It's not these boards that tell you, oh, you should put a tree over there and a little grass over here in the sidewalk. The key decision, the key power in any kind of development is zoning. Because now they have a right under the law, under a C5 zone, to do a lot of stuff. And if they want to do that, they have a right to do that. You can tinker with it a little bit, but um, once that power is given away, and that's the mistake that was made, uh, was giving away the the, uh, the power to control the zone and hear what the proposal was going to be before. Not one Ten day seconds. it's Cobb Golf, one day it's Costco. We don't know what it's going to be.